Well, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to April 27th, 2022, Lunchtime Leadership Lessons with Lisa. You are here with me every Wednesday, 1230 to 1, and I'm excited to have you. Again, my name is Lisa A. Harris. I am your 30-minute coach, educator, challenger of your comfort, supporter of your goal for leadership and your dreams. The person to help you question the impossible, to make it possible, to inspire you to your fullest potential, and the lover of everything required to lead people through inclusion and belonging. So, so glad to have you here today. I am still on the topic of integrity, and I will tell you why, because in the last week, uh, we have seen so many instances in the last couple of weeks around integrity that I just seem to sit in it. Um, we had the questioning of Katanjay Brown Jackson as Supreme Court candidate that lacked integrity. Thank God we had Cory Booker come through at the end to put a little sprinkle of Jesus on there to make everything all right. In this past week, we had a Latinx woman attack a young African-American boy because she thought he took her wallet. Of all the people in the hotel, she picks the young black boy. We have had more incidences of people being shot um, by officers. We have watched uh, things on Netflix and other places where integrity is in question. And ultimately, the question of integrity goes back to where do we learn it? And so I decided to take a different approach for this part of leadership and look at families uh, and look at how we learn integrity uh, and truth in the first place we learn it. And I did a little research on this uh, as it relates to families. The quote I wanna start with today is by Gandhi. And I think it's so relevant to this topic, which is, to believe in something and not to live it is dishonest. I love the quote. I am sometimes even challenged by the quote because I wonder sometimes if the people who are saying the things they say actually believe it or do they believe other people believe it and so therefore it's honest enough even if they don't agree. And the example I can have of that is a gentleman did an interview recently of a pastor who made comments about Joe Biden being a pedophile and uh, things of that nature. And the uh, reporter actually asked the pastor, do you have evidence that Joe Biden is a pedophile? And do you have any information that's contrary to what reporters have found where Joe Biden is not a pedophile? And this is a pastor. And he said, no, I don't. Um, and then the reporter said, well, then why are you sharing that information with your followers? And he said, well, it's not my job to give them the correct information. It's my job to tell them things. It's their job to go research it. Now, I'm sure you all are like, oh my goodness, because I surely was when I watched the interview. And I thought to myself, as a pastor, your level of integrity is shot you are repeating and saying things that are nowhere close to being the truth. And then on top of insulting Joe Biden and integrity in general, you're going to put the responsibility on your parishioners to go do the research to find out the real answer. I don't know what you all think, but what's scary is I know he knows that those people are not going to do the research. And that is our problem is that we will not research it. It could actually be true, but we won't spend the time to do it. And so what we're telling people who are then passing it down to their families is really dangerous. And so when I want us to think about leadership in terms of family on the subject of integrity and how we plan on leading our families, which is a higher form of leadership, our spouses, our loved ones, and mostly our children, and so I did a little research and got some articles because, you know, the reality is this is an important subject when we think about integrity in our family. Um, and so I got uh, two articles and they make comments about how parents model integrity and truth to their children and, and, and then the impact that this actually makes. And I want to go back to this. It's like the politics and the climate of the world today 
should make us ask, are we living our values? And are we saying what's important to each of us, even in those values? And here's the thing. And when we tell our children to tell the truth, when we tell the people who work for us, um, volunteer or otherwise, to tell the truth, what are we listening to our words? Are we conscious of our actions and our choices? And is anything that we're saying and doing eating at that good old American pie? Because what are we really teaching people? And when we tell someone else a lie on our to lie on our behalf, you know, like for example, we don't want to answer the phone, we don't want to go to the door, um, we tell a mistruth on someone else or on social media, we lie about who we are, what we are, how much money we have, what our status is, who our families are. Um, and we don't bother to go then and people around and do the homework. We take the words of other people without doing our homework. And in essence, what we have taught our children is when we behave in that way, that even though we said to you, whatever you do, don't lie. In essence, we have taught them to question our integrity and integrity in general, because again, we have role modeled this. And so when they grow up and they go to work, they are confused. When they go to school, they're probably confused. So I decided uh, I would read a couple of articles on integrity as it relates to family and as it relates to children. As you all know quite clearly, I am not a child psychologist, nor do I play one on this program. Um, again, I read some articles and I thought it was really critical to share this leadership opportunity for family with you uh, and go and, and, and give you some insight. As I often say, if you're going to be an effective leader, you have to first learn to lead yourself and then you lead others. And in some people's cases, not everybody, we are also responsible for leading spouses, significant others, and children. And what I think doesn't occur to the people who sit on television is that their behavior is role modeling behavior to children. And this is so important that even if they're gonna watch it, we need to be counseling them about what it means to tell the truth and function in integrity. You know, our sense of integrity, again, begins long before we show up in school. I think that school has an opportunity to challenge that sense of integrity, to either reinforce it, to question it in a sense, or completely shred it based on the behaviors of teachers, and other people in that environment. The most important thing to remember is just as we watch leaders as adults, our children are watching each of us and television and everything else. And so when we give them examples where people are not telling the truth and we brush it off, like, well, it's more important that that, no, it's not more important. It's more important to sit in the truth. Now, I'm not here for any judgment because we're human and I don't know a soul who's never told a mistruth, even if it was just to protect somebody else's feelings. But I am here to ask you about the importance of what it means to lead adults and to watch the messages that we give so that our behaviors are aligning with the values that we have and our ability to actually tell the truth. And I'm just gonna share with you, cause this is you know, truly a conversation again for today on this topic, you know, how do I know that we're struggling? And I'm gonna start with something simple that sometimes is controversial. I'm gonna start with our Jesus, our Lord and Savior, who grew up in Bethlehem. Now you should ask, and when people do ask, where is Bethlehem located? Bethlehem is located at the Southern end of Jerusalem from Jerusalem city. And if you think about the whole Oslo Peace Accord, Israel turned Bethlehem over to the Palestine's um, authority in 1995, and it's been there for 28 years. But Bethlehem is in Jerusalem. So I have to ask all of you, if we're thinking about a moment of integrity, if you're looking around your house and you're looking at a picture of Jesus, if you're walking into your church and you're looking at a picture of Jesus, I want you to ask yourself, how is it possible that the Jesus picture you're looking at doesn't look more Palestinian than it does when you're looking at blonde and blue eyes or brown hair and brown eyes with white skin? This is not possible if we're telling the truth about a birthplace of Jesus in Bethlehem, in Jerusalem. So we have to consider that sometimes a lack of truth 
permeates where we are and how we think. This is important. The birthplace of civilization is Africa. Ask people where they think the birthplace of civil, I'm sorry, Egypt in Africa. Ask people where Egypt is. They don't even know Egypt is in Africa. And they don't know that people migrated from Africa to fill all the other places, Europe, Asia, right? Migrated. But if you ask people about the birthplace, never will they say. Most people might say that they know that the birthplace of civilization is that. This is me. This shows that we're not telling the truth, right? Think about it. When the slaves were brought over here, they were given the Bible. The Bible has 66 books. The slave Bible had 14. It was missing all the passages around freedom. We're not telling the truth. So our integrity is in question. And the problem that we're struggling with is as you keep building on these moments that lack integrity, you have to keep asking yourself, how do we speak truth and function in integrity when sometimes even the baseline of our existence is not factual, right? And just think, we spent this whole time about with Christopher Columbus, who discovered America. How do you discover a place that already has people inhabiting it? How do you justify that as a history fact, right? So our, our integrity, in terms of even just our history, is, is in peril. And we have to start asking ourselves, what are we saying? What are we doing? What questions are we asking? What research are we doing? And how are these mistruths being passed on and perpetuating more mistruths? And how are people leading from a place of misinformation and lack of research and responsibility to discover the truth? And so the two articles that I'm focused on today, and this will be part one of this around family and part two um, will be next, is uh, you know just the value of integrity. And so the article that I got this one on was comes from Focus on the Family. And the article is titled Value of Integrity. And it talks about you know, parents who not only tell the truth, but also value integrity. You know, the fact that parents are telling their kids what's important to them and how to be trustworthy and reliable and dependable people. Um, and then against the backdrop of coming in contact with people who are not, or situations that are not, or television programs or leaders not functioning in that space, right? Because our culture today actually doesn't value integrity. It's a hard thing to say. So when we talk about leaders valuing it, we have to say all leaders, not just the ones in corporate America, the ones in nonprofit, the ones in pharmaceutical, the ones sitting in your doctor's office, the ones sitting in the church, the ones sitting you know, around the corner who's selling um, at the grocery store, whatever it is, everybody needs to value integrity. And so this lack of valuing it leads to an attitude that says, it's okay to do whatever we want as long as no one gets hurt and not caught. Well, that is scary because literally it's kind of like almost setting up how social media allows you to uh, pick on people, talk about people, attack people, impact people, and you never have to be accountable for your actions. Just like you can shoot and kill people and never be accountable for it, but always having justifiable excuses. This is lacking integrity in leadership. And so we're living in a day where success is becoming more important than being honest. Being popular is more important than being honest. Being an influencer is more important than being honest. Getting reelected is more important than being honest. And so whether you are an athlete or a, a student cheating on exams just to pass so you can maintain a high grade point average, right? Literally hurting someone else in the classroom environment to make a point so that you can feel more important, being a bully, all of this, parents, leaders, we have to start asking where are our children getting this from because their behavior is struggling with uh, uh, integrity. And needless to say, everyone, I'm not talking about everybody. We are all human, some spaces and places better than others, but I want you to consider the impact for children growing up in spaces where they are seeing things where their integrity is at question. And if they see it when they're young, they grow up. Eventually, you and I are working with people 
who don't function in their space with integrity. And we wonder how in the world is that possible? Might it be that somewhere along their children's journey that they learned and watched and saw things that did not support or nurture integrity in their family or in their social environment, right? It was more important for them to win the trophy than it was to help the person who might have fallen along the way. This is why we get teary-eyed and excited when we see people functioning in integrity because we long for it as human beings, as souls on a Christian journey, as people of faith, we long for those moments of integrity. So <laughs> um, this is uh, looking at how do we actually improve integrity in, in our families? What, what things do we need to consider? And so that article tells us to focus on how do you grow in integrity, right? Um, first of all, we as adults and we as parents uh, and as leaders have to value integrity more than we do success. If you value integrity more than you do success, then people get to lose without trophies. If you value integrity more than success, you get to tell your child that we don't always win. You get to tell your child about your real struggles. You get to tell your child everything's not perfect, that it's not easy that when you leave this planet, that they will be here to live out their lives and you want them to live them in a way that when they die, their legacy has integrity. That it's all right that we may not get everything we want because that might not even be what God's purpose is for us. It may be totally different than what we're asking for. So sometimes we're going to lose. Sometimes we're going to come up on the shorter end of the stick. Sometimes we, might also be the people making a decision about the impact of other people. So if you're raising boys, for example, and they one day get in the spot where they're looking at salaries for women, and those salaries are inconsistent with their fellow male coworkers, this is a moment of integrity. Pay equity is a form of integrity. Look at the salaries, be fair about work, right? Consider who you're raising, and what you're raising them to become. And it's all right, as long as you are focused on integrity and not what you can just get. Um, think about it. You guys remember uh, that uh, the celebrity families who got their daughters into college and they didn't even have a grade point average to get them in there. And I still find it fascinating when the young girls are like, I, I didn't know I got, I, I was surprised that I got in, but I thought, well, maybe I, I, something happened. How is that possible? And like in that family, did the child not ask, how did I get in here? And if the child asked and the parent said, oh, it might just been the luck of the door and you knew you paid to get your child in, tell your child the truth. Don't write your child's essays. Don't do your child's homework. Don't be the bully for your child in school. Don't go beat up teachers, have conversations with them. Don't support a lack of integrity. Think about what that will mean and what that will do when, it time, when the time comes for your child to make those decisions. As they say, integrity isn't what happens when people are looking at you, it's when no one is watching. You want your child to be that person. Heck, I want to work with people who are like that. I want leaders who are like that, right? So our culture who is um, wrapped up in this thing about values needs to become more vigilant about what it is. Hold people accountable. I'm not sure if you recently saw, but there's a woman, she's in the state of Michigan and she starts off talking about how she is a woman. She is, I believe, a Catholic, a person of faith. She is white and she is married with children. And she refuses to allow the government or the Republicans in this example that she shared to dictate that as being white, Christian, married with children, that she is a woman who doesn't respect the challenges and tragedies of people of color. And that our children, her children as white children are not necessarily interested in learning about issues around race because she is. Because even if she did not own slaves and her children didn't either, it doesn't matter because they should learn their history. 
This is integrity and accountability. And this is critical. The next thing is that parents have to initiate these conversations. When you're watching television or you're watching even a, a program, um, there's one on Netflix about uh, the woman who ran a vegan company, right? The woman who was trying to fix these issues around blood tests. All of these people then turn their situations into something where they're lying and not telling the truth, right? We need to initiate conversations. We're not going to catch everything as parents, right? So talk in the car. Ask your child about their day. Ask them what did they notice that went on the day? You know, who told the truth? Who didn't tell the truth? Who was open and friendly? Use the time at, uh, at, at the coffee shop. Use your time after church. Use your time at the dinner table. Use your time walking. Whatever it is, just talk together and make it a point to talk about integrity. What are your family's values? What are they? What's your shield that says our family values integrity, time together, faith, right? Uh, trust, whatever they may be, talk about them. And talk about the character traits with your team. You know, not just little kids, even with your team. Ask them, how do they define integrity, right? What's more important, do they think? Having integrity or being successful? Is there a person that they feel exhibits integrity at a high level? And what do they think is hard about being honest, right? Because honestly, sometimes we don't wanna tell our friends that they have no clothes on. We don't wanna tell them that, that they said or did something that might've hurt or harmed somebody else because we love them. But if we love them, we have to function in a different space of integrity, right? And equally important when you're having this conversations, particularly with teens, Focus on the family says, listen to them. Really hear what they say when you ask them to define integrity, what's important about integrity, who's exhibiting it, and why is it so hard. Listen for their answers. Have a real and honest conversation about ways in which you struggle as a parent. Talk about your job and some of the challenges you face at your work or some of the challenges you face at your church or your volunteer organization. Or how about some of the challenges you face when you have not been taught history correctly, fairly, or balanced because there's so much you're missing? This is a struggle that you could use to build relationship, to work on integrity, to build character, to open up a space for your children to tell you the truth. And I'm having this conversation also because I brought up this topic around integrity with some uh, what I'll call younger people. And the comments that they made about how they learned about integrity, how they, their integrity was impacted or questioned, how they grew up in environments where they were told one thing and saw something else and no one ever kind of told them, right? The expectation is, I want you to be honest, but they never had conversation. And so for me who has no children, just maybe a lot of young people I love, I am so passionate about growing the next generation for it to be safe for them to have these conversations as you're growing them to be leaders of people. Let's start young, let's start at teens, and let's really have this conversation. And ultimately, for those of us who are people of faith, what does God's word say about integrity? What does God say about the importance of telling the truth, right? What does God say about standing up for people? What does it mean to go and find the right answers to say, no, I don't deserve, yes, I deserve, see me, hear me, learn about me, understand about somebody other than self. What does God's word say? This is critical when we think about the family. You need to remain alert, you know, to better understand the challenges that your team is facing. You know, maybe one day you need to visit their school. You need to spend some time with their teachers. Maybe you should see what's going on at the school, read the paper. You be the person to do the carpool if you can and listen to the conversations that they're having in the car. Have them at your house if it's possible. I know we're still dealing with COVID so you can figure out what that is. Do a Zoom call with all of them if it's necessary. You know, what does your youth pastor say? What are they teaching in your church about integrity and what Jesus says? And what are they having in terms of conversation? about what it means, right? It's also helpful to be aware of what's happening even in the culture today with our teens. Start reading articles about 
teens and, 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 and the popular music that they're listening to in the movies. And again, what's on television? Spend some time watching some of those shows together and asking those questions we talked about um, before, right? Um, offer some thoughts uh, to your, your children on everything from what you believe to be true and what you struggle with, right? Uh, sit down and do a project on what it means to have integrity, right? Because it's so important to get to that space where your kids understand the difference between truth in your faith and your family values and the truth of the world. Because the world is struggling with integrity as I started this um, time with you. The other thing that is so important for those of us of faith is that we really do need to pray uh, for our teens, right? Pray specifically that they don't get caught in doing things that are dishonest. Uh, and if they do, that they have the courage to say that they were not telling the truth and the courage to stand up to tell the truth. This is important because again, we are human beings, we're souls having a human experience and it doesn't mean we're not gonna lie. And all of that little side comment about telling little white lies, there's no such thing as little and lies don't have a color. <laughs> so we really wanna make sure that we are clear about those lies, right? And when your child does lie, when your teen lies, when your leaders don't tell the truth, when your politicians and people in various spaces and places where your expectation is the truth is coming, don't tell the truth, then we have to find our way to hold each other accountable. And there has to be consequences for not telling the truth. There has to be consequences for just no, we can say stuff and then come back and say, well, I didn't know. That's not sufficient anymore. There has to be consequences for telling someone when you shot them in the back, it's like, I feared for my life. You couldn't fear for your life if their back was to you. We have to have consequences for our behavior. Pray also that your team would have the strength and the personal conviction to do the right thing, even when it's difficult, and talk about what it means when those things are difficult. Prayer helps us when we are trying to walk through this journey of life where so many things are bouncing against us and we are struggling to be good and faithful Christians, men and women of God, we have to pray. And sometimes it's through failure, right? When we have not done what we were supposed to do that real growth comes. So embrace the fact that something might not have gone the way you would have and ask how might we do it differently. Ask your children, ask your teens. When you see it with your adult leaders and you have to say that was not with integrity, how might we do this differently? Boss, team member, self, we have to understand that failure is growth and we want to make sure that it works. Parents, this was just part two. I'm going to come back and we're going to talk about next um, the other article that we that I read with Dr. Uh, Marilyn Mitchell um, from Roots, and we're going to talk about adults and some consequences. And then I'm going to end this with some recommendations and thoughts. So thank you all for joining me today. I'm really excited to talk about integrity at both a formal leadership level and the leadership level that is our families. We have the ultimate responsibility for each other because God has called us to be in support of each other. He has called us to love each other and he has called us to be in integrity in terms of our truths with each other. This is our opportunity to help shift what is taking place today, which is the forms of it, lack of integrity are taking over our values and we are all struggling and we sometimes are sitting back. So let us tell the truth, whether it's the truth about disease and COVID, the truth about our policing, the truth about our leadership, the truth about the families in which we come from and the environments in which we grew up in. If we can start by just telling the truth of our history, we can begin to address the failure and then see the opportunity to be not just outstanding leaders of truth and of integrity, but outstanding human beings who walk this planet with purpose. 
Thank you all so much for your time. Look forward to talking to you again. Be blessed, be purposeful, and work toward finding that space that gives you freedom and integrity. Again, thank you for hanging out. Lunchtime Leadership Lessons with Lisa. Bye-bye now.